Today is part two of my Ultimate Office Makeover video series where I focus in on building the furniture for the office and showing you some of the glamour shots at the end. So if you like this type of content, please stick around and let's get on with the build. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So today we are gonna dig into the building of the furniture for my ultimate office makeover. This is part two of my multi-part video series on the renovation of my office space. If you have not already watched part one, I will link it above and link it below. That's where I run through the design of all the different components that I plan on building for my office. And so today we are gonna focus in on the vertical cabinet that I ended up making for the office. Now the vertical cabinet is one of many components, two desks, horizontal cabinet, vertical cabinet, and a bookshelf that I ended up building. And in the end, I ended up actually renovating the entire closet as well, adding some shelves to there, which we will get to that in a future segment. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. And let's go ahead and get on with the build. For the bulk of the furniture for the office, I chose to use MDF over plywood wood or hardwood. I chose MDF mainly because of its cost. By using MDF, I was able to reduce the cost of the project by over 60% which equated to about $400 US, so it was non-insignificant. The best finish for MDF is paint, which requires priming before the final top coat. I chose to prime each sheet individually rather than priming the finished piece. Based on internet research, I used an oil-based primer, which has a longer dry time. In the end, it took nearly two full days to prime all 10 sheets. If you use plywood, you can avoid this entire process, and that is definitely what I would recommend. The building process starts with breaking down the sheet goods into smaller, more manageable sizes based on the plans that I created. Since MDF is so heavy, I needed a second person to help me move full sheets around throughout the garage and get them cut. This slowed the process considerably and quite honestly became a point of frustration for both me and my not so eager helpers. But in the end, we got all the pieces broken down and we were able to start the build. I used the Craig track saw to break down the sheets. If you don't have a track saw and you want to tackle a project like this, I highly recommend making that investment. It's well worth the money and it will save you a ton of time over a regular straight edge or a guide with your circular saw. I used the fence on the table saw and a stop block on the miter saw to create precise cuts that are the same every time. This is very important for the legs, which all need to be the same length. Before final assembly, I created a jig to route the grooves for the LED lighting that I incorporated into the final design. I used my Bosch plunge router to create the grooves. I made two passes with a quarter inch straight cut bit. One of the major downsides of using MDF is just the sheer volume of dust that it creates. The dust is ridiculously fine, it clogs up every filter that you own, and it's just a challenge to manage. So in between each cut that I made, I used the dust collection system to remove all the fine dust that was created, and then I made the second pass. Once all the pieces were cut to size, I decided to paint the pieces their final color prior to assembly. My thought process here is it would be much easier to paint all the pieces when they were lying flat than to get into all the corners once the furniture was assembled. Although this was probably the right way to go, it only delayed the assembly process even further and then allowed me to nick and scratch the fresh paint while I was assembling the furniture. Finally, with all the pieces cut and painted, I got to assembling the units. I assembled each of them in the garage to ensure everything fit together properly and it allowed for easier manipulation of the larger pieces. I found it very helpful to mark on the outside panels where the inside panels would go. Then you could pre-drill and precisely align the inside panels with minimal effort. As a final step, I labeled all the parts 
disassembled the unit and moved it to the basement for assembly. Once I was in my office, I stood the vertical pieces up and attached them to each other from the side. With a little help from Big Red, I attached the bottom by applying some pressure to push down the carpet and screwing into the pre-drilled holes. If I had not pre-assembled the unit in the garage, I do not believe I would be able to get the bottom attached at all, since there was only a half inch from the ceiling and there was simply no way to get under the unit to ensure the bottom was flush. Off camera, we muscled it into place and secured it to the walls using two and a half inch deck screws into the studs. The final part of the assembly was to add some edge banding to the MDF to make the sides look more polished. I started with some rough cut sapele, cleaned it up with the planer, and then I cut quarter inch thick strips using the table saw to create the edge banding. I finessed the final thickness of the edge banding using the drum sander, and then put an eighth inch round over on all the pieces using the router table. After some light sanding, I installed the edge banding using a brad nailer and some one inch brads. All right, well, that was the project. I hope you enjoyed it. Man, it was a lot of work. I learned a lot along the way, but I think I always underestimate just how long and how hard some of these projects are gonna be. But in this one, I think the outcome was well worth the effort. I'm really happy with the results. I got exactly what I was looking for in the end. And so I guess that's what it's all about. All right, thank you so much for getting this far. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like these that ultimately become videos. All right, well, thanks again for getting this far and don't forget to be inspired.